Hey songwriters, welcome to the studio. My name is Dean and in this video, we're looking at how to mix high quality vocals in GarageBand. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Over the past several years, I've gotten to mix tons of songs for paying clients, students, and my own originals, all in GarageBand. So in this video, I wanna show you my process behind mixing a high quality vocal in GarageBand. So let's dive in. So before we get into all the fancy mixing stuff like EQ and compression and reverb, we actually need to back up a couple steps and talk about recording and editing. So we'll start with two recording quick tips. Number one, don't record into a wall. Whatever size room you're in, just get into the middle of the room, back away from the walls because it'll help eliminate reflections. A reflection is where your voice hits a wall and comes back and is captured by the microphone another time and it makes the recording just sound a bit cheap and like it's in a tin can. The second recording tip is record at a healthy signal volume. Here I have three different takes recorded at three different volumes. The first recording is what I would call a healthy signal. It's between 50 and 60% of the way up the meter. The second vocal here is too quiet. And what happens when you try and boost a low signal like this is that you'll boost a lot of the ambient sounds in the room too, like hums or buzzes or clicks or pops. And the last recording is too loud or what we call too hot. You can see right here it's beginning to clip, which is where it's so loud you go into the red and it distorts your voice. It never sounds good. The last thing you want to do before you go into mixing and processing your vocal is a little bit of editing. And all we're trying to do here in the editing phase is eliminate some of those sounds at the front or tail end of your recording that we don't want to hear. Let me solo a part in this lead vocal and let you hear what I'm talking about. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. So did you hear that big lip smack before I started singing and then how I clicked the mouse after I finished the take? So the first technique for eliminating these sounds would simply be using the shave tool. Hold your mouse over the end or the beginning of a take and you can actually shave off those sounds on either side. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. So much, much cleaner, right? Then the second option would be using what's called the noise gate. So hit B on your typing keyboard and we're gonna click the noise gate on and drag it up. And what this is gonna do is eliminate any extra sounds outside of the singing vocal. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. So what's the big difference between the two? Well, when you edit it manually, you can keep your breaths. When you do a noise gate, it's gonna eliminate all of the noises. So it's really an artistic choice for you. So now that we've got a quality, clean recording, we're ready to start processing the vocal. And first on the list is EQ, which is basically how we sonically clean up your vocal. Because within a vocal, there are parts that we're gonna wanna highlight, but then there's also parts that we're gonna wanna minimize because they just sound muddy or woofy. And what we're gonna do is hit B on our typing keyboard to bring up the smart controls or the mix window here in GarageBand. Then next, we're gonna go over to the plugins drop down menu where we can see all of our effects. So to start EQing this vocal, we're gonna simply go over to the EQ tab, and I'm gonna show you two really important foundational moves that you can make on your vocal. First is what's called a high pass filter. And this is gonna clean up a lot of the muddiness on the low end of your vocal. And what I usually do is hit play on this vocal and turn up the high pass filter until I can really hear it working. And then I simply back it down until I can barely tell it's working. Cause I know it didn't, I know it didn't. The second foundational move is the high shelf boost. This is gonna give brightness and presence to your vocal. I typically start it right at the dot and then I never do it more than about 5 dBs. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Then next are two more advanced moves. Again, we're gonna have one boost and one cut. So first we'll do the cut. And all we're gonna do is turn on any band and we're gonna be looking between 500 hertz and 1K. And what I like to do is put it up really high. And basically what you're doing is scanning around for the most offensive or ugliest frequency you can find. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. And don't you even say it. You hear that? Ouch, that hurts my ears. So we're simply going to go the other direction 
and subtract or do what's called a scoop down to about four or five dBs. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. And what that's doing is it's cleaning up the vocal. And now for our addition. We're gonna grab another band and be looking in the range between about 2K and 5K here. But before I do that, I wanna thin out this band a little bit by going down to Q, double clicking, and doing about a three. And somewhere in this region lives a part of my voice and a part of your voice that sounds really nice, and we wanna highlight that. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. So now we've done four moves, two basic and two more advanced. So let's turn the EQ off and back on and see if we can hear the difference. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Now the difference is very subtle and that's why EQ can be tricky. But if you'll just follow these four steps I've shown you, you'll end up with a clean vocal every time. Next on the list is compression. A compressor is a tool that evens out your vocal performance by taking some of the louder parts of your vocal and turning them down and some of the quieter parts of your performance and turning them up. And the result makes your vocal sound more present and more full in the mix. So I'll turn the compressor on I'll click here in the middle to bring up its window. And now let's translate some of these knobs. So the threshold is what's gonna bring down some of those louder parts of the song. Then on the other end is the gain knob, which is gonna bring up some of the quieter parts of your performance. Then here in the middle is the ratio knob, which controls how much the vocal is being compressed, how much you're bringing that high down and that low up. The attack is how fast the compressor turns on, but we're not gonna to touch that in this video. Don't worry about it. So first, I'm gonna bring down the threshold until my vocal starts hitting about halfway down this meter. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. And next, I'm gonna go to the bottom end and turn up my gain or my quieter parts to about three dBs. It's just a good starting point. But where you're gonna start to hear a big difference is when I turn up the ratio. Right now, we have a very gentle ratio, so we're gonna push that up a bit and squeeze the vocal. So I'll take it up to three, and we'll give it a go. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Now you can hear it start to compress it down. Now I could be more aggressive with it. I'll take it up to eight to one now. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Now that really sounds like a pop vocal. So as a general rule of thumb with ratios, if you've got a more singer songwriter style song, you'll probably be about three to one or maybe even four to one in your ratio. But if you're going for a pop sound that's more highly produced, you're probably looking at about an eight to one ratio. So that's all for the compressor. Now let's move on to reverb. So in GarageBand, you have a lot of great stock reverbs that are really easy to work. And the first one I wanna show you is right down here, the master reverb. All we have to do is turn that up to about halfway and give it a try. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. So for this song, that's probably too much reverb, but for your song, that might be just right. For me, I'm gonna back it down just a bit, but here's a little reverb trick that I wanna share with you. You can actually combine two different reverbs together to get a more full lush sound. And when you're combining reverbs, you'll typically combine a longer reverb with a short reverb. In our case here, the master reverb is a long reverb. It has a very long tail, but this reverb here on the panel is actually a short reverb. So if I turn it way up, you can hear it. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Now that's way too much, but I just wanted you to hear it. So if I back that down, now we have a combination of both reverbs. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Which is really quite a nice sound. So my closing tip on reverb is be careful how much reverb you use. Newer mixers tend to use too much reverb. So put it in a spot where you can hear the reverb, but it's not just overtaking the mix and way overdone. So next on the list is adding a bit of delay to the vocal. And again, GarageBand makes that really easy. All we have to do is come down here to the master echo. We'll turn it up to halfway and give it a try. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. So obviously for this song, that's way too strong. So I'm gonna back it down again. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. So you can hear just a little bit of that echo tell at the end of each phrase, which makes the vocal sound bigger and fuller and just better. The fifth and final thing on our mix list is tuning the vocal. So we'll start by hitting E on our typing keyboard, 
going over to the track tab and here you'll see the pitch correction window. So we'll start of course by pushing up the pitch correction slider and as a general rule of thumb if I'm doing something singer songwriter it's usually between 65 and 70 but if I'm doing something more pop it's usually between 80 and 85 and if you want the auto tune effect then you're going to push the slider all the way up to 100. So I'm going to go on up to 80 and then second, I'm going to hit the limit to key button, which is going to push every note that I sing towards the key of my song. All right, so now let's try it before and after. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Now after. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. So here's one last tip with pitch correction. To get the best result, you really need to know the key of your song and put that up here. But if you don't know the key of your song, then simply turn off the limit to key button and it will simply push any note you're singing to the closest note you're singing as opposed to the closest note within the key up here. All right, so now let's enjoy the work that we've done. I'm gonna turn off all of the processing and do a comparison of the before and after. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. And don't you even say it didn't hurt. Very, very nice. So the last quick thing I wanna show you is how to process your background vocals. And this is really, really easy. To save yourself time, you're simply gonna hit Command D on your typing keyboard, which creates an exact duplicate of that track, including all of the processing that you've already done. So next, I'll just rename the track. And then I'm gonna do three things. Number one, I'm gonna add a bit more reverb to the background vocal because I wanna give it more space and more depth than the lead vocal. Number two, we're simply gonna pan that background vocal a little to the right. And then number three, we're gonna bring back its volume. And all of these moves give your background vocal its own place in the mix without competing with the lead vocal. So now let's have a listen to our lead and background vocals together. I will find my life in your way. Now this is a process that yes, it's gonna take you some time to learn and master, but once you do it, you could probably do all of this in 10 or 20 minutes. So as we close out this video, I just wanna share a little bit about what the songwriting studio is. Now you might think this is a channel all about GarageBand and that's kind of true, but not really. You see, my goal is to train and equip skilled artists to write, to record and produce, and then to release their own music from home. So if you're interested in growing in your craft as a songwriter, learning to produce your songs in a high quality way, and then being able to publish and release your songs, then stick around and I'll catch you in the next video.